looking for the latest information on the 2019 data science and analytics hiring market, but only have 15 minutes to spare? This recap video will cover the top highlights from our 2019 salary report, including how we segment the data science and analytics market for analysis, how these segments compare, demographically speaking, 2019 salaries for both groups and how they've changed from the last year, our key hiring market insights. Our 2019 report combines our research on both data scientists and predictive analytics professionals and examines salaries and demographic data on thousands of these professionals across the U.S. This video will have highlights, but you can find more extensive analysis in the 50-page report, which can be downloaded for free at birchworks.com study. For those of you who aren't familiar with Birchworks, we're an executive recruiting firm specializing in quantitative fields like analytics, data science, and marketing research. We're le the leading resource for insights about the hiring market, including our comprehensive salary reports like the one covered in this video. Our data insights have been repeatedly mentioned in the press, and this year, Birchworks was once again recognized by Forbes as one of America's best recruiting firms. We've always regarded data scientists as a specialized subset of predictive analytics professionals. We're presenting these two sets of data side by side to show some of the interesting comparisons between the two groups that we've noticed over the past six years of publishing these reports. Birchworks has typically segmented data scientists and predictive analytics professionals because of skill set differences that led to differing salary bands. But there are many other differences besides just salaries. So how do we separate these groups for analysis? Both data scientists and predictive analytics professionals are able to analyze data, glean insights, and prescribe action. They both have substantial quantitative skills, like modeling, et cetera. But the main distinction, as Birchworks defines them, is that data scientists focus primarily on unstructured or streaming data, while the predictive analysts use mostly structured data. As a result, you often see data scientists have a stronger computer science coding, and programming skill set that other predictive analytics professionals might not have. While both groups come from a statistics or math background, data scientists are more likely to have studied engineering or computer science, while predictive analytics professionals are more likely to have some business background or economics. We're also seeing newer programs popping up and more professionals using online courses or boot camps to retrain or expand their skill sets. Both may use a wide variety of tools to tackle their work. We've listed some of the common ones we tend to see here, but there are new ones popping up all the time. Speaking of tools, these professionals' preferences can vary. Every year, our most popular flash survey asks data scientists and analytics professionals whether they prefer to use SAS, R, or Python. Here you can see the four-year trend for both predictive analytics professionals on the left and data scientists on the right. Data scientists have always favored open source tools, especially Python, with SAS receiving no votes among this group in 2019. Among, predict among predictive analytics professionals that primarily focus on structured data, tool preferences were more mixed, but Python managed to get ahead of SAS in 2019. Some of the groups this study doesn't include are marketing research, software developers, traditional MBAs, web analytics, business intelligence and information technology, and data engineers. While data scientists and predictive analytics professionals might use tools like Excel, PowerPoint, Adobe, and Google Analytics, or Tableau, those tools by themselves do not qualify someone for our sample. Now on to the data. First, let's start with our demographic analysis where we'll show predictive analytics versus data science side by side. As you can see, there are many professionals with under 10 years of experience in both data science and predictive analytics, but data science especially skews toward early career professionals with emerging technologies and so much hype around the field. When you compare data scientists to other in others in predictive analytics, there is a much higher prevalence of PhDs. About 47% of data scientists hold a PhD, while only 15% of their counterparts in predictive analytics do. 
in both groups, the vast majority of professionals have a graduate degree. When we look at the area of study from the highest degree in each field, we can see that both are likely to have a statistics and mathematics background with predictive analytics more so. However, data scientists are more likely to have computer science or engineering degrees, while predictive analytics professionals are more likely to come from a business or econ background. The business category includes some quantitative MBAs, but many of these professionals have a master's degree in business analytics, which is a segment that has been growing rapidly in popularity in the past few years. Another area where we see a big difference between data science and predictive analytics is the industries where they're employed. Nearly 50% of data scientists are employed in tech, which has remained fairly consistent over the years. The most common industries for predictive analytics are typically financial services, followed by advertising and marketing services firms. Gender-wise, men continue to dominate the quantitative field. But as the chart indicates, the proportion of women is higher in predictive analytics than it is in data science. The predictive analytics number is about on par with what you see in many STEM fields. Here you can see the proportion of women shifts as experience and management level increases in predictive analytics. We have individual contributors on the bottom, starting with one to three years experience, all the way up to managers, marked MG, with senior executives at the top. And now let's take a look at compensation. Once we have categorized someone as predictive analytics or data science based on the criteria outlined earlier, we classify them into one of six job categories. First, we assign each professional to a job category as either an individual contributor, IC, or manager, MG. And then we break into three levels. Individual contributors at level one are those typically in the first three years of their career. Level two professionals typically have four to eight years of experience. And level three professionals usually have over nine years of experience and likely help train and mentor analysts and are consider considered subject matter experts. For managers, we also have three levels dependent on the number of people they manage and their function. A level one manager is typically tactical in focus and may manage one to three direct reports while level two leads a function or executes strategy and typically has four to nine direct reports. Managers at level three are at the executive level, responsible for determining strategy and likely have 10 or more direct reports. So now let's see how salaries change for each group from our analysis in 2018. Here you can see the individual contributor salaries for predictive analytics, which increased from two to 4% depending on experience. Predictive analytics manager salaries were mostly steady, so senior leader salaries increased by 4% to 240000 For data scientists, individual contributor salaries were mostly unchanged from last year. You can see there was a slight increase for those at level three with the most experience. And data science managers increased anywhere from zero to 3% from last year, depending on the size of their team. As mentioned previously, one of the main reasons we keep these groups segmented is because of their differing skills tend to, tend to impact salaries. And here you can see just how much of a difference that can make. It's especially apparent among individual contributors, where data scientists may earn anywhere from 19 to 34% more than predictive analytics professionals at the same job, so at the same job level. But the disparity becomes less pronounced among executives where leadership skills tend to have more of an impact on salary than technical expertise. Because our recruiters talk to hundreds of professionals and quantitative teams each year, we get a unique view of what's happening in the market from a broad range of people across the country and different industries. Open source tools and vendor provided solutions have made implementing what used to be complex and rigorous math and computer science problems more accessible to a wider range of individuals. While data science tools are far from a point and click stage, they are maturing quickly. The accelerating proliferation of data science and analytics initiatives across the country and across a multitude of industries 
has led to quantitative professionals having more options than ever, not only geographically and industry-wise, but options have also become more technically diverse as more industries continue to mature and explore new potential use cases for their data teams. There has also been increased interest in so-called mission-driven roles that have some sort of societal or environmental impact, such as using data to improve health outcomes or energy efficiency, or to support nonprofit work. With many quantitative teams increasing their size and scope, many businesses are grappling with the challenge of how best to liaise between the technical team and other business unit stakeholders. Companies sometimes staff up with a so-called data science citizen, who is typically a professional with a quantitative foundation who has technical depth, along with the business acumen necessary to translate between the quantitative team and professionals in other business areas, like marketing or finance, or even leaders in the C-suite. These professionals may have a range of job titles and use their expertise to be representatives to the quantitative team and free up data scientists to do what they do best, advanced technical analysis. Both types of roles are important to a successful quantitative team, and we're seeing more interest in these roles as team size expands. To those looking to hire talent, it's no secret that the location of your data science team can help or hinder your hiring results. We've seen many companies opening satellite offices in multiple urban areas to increase their roles marketability. Major companies in San Francisco, especially, are continuing to expand their talent outreach with satellite offices as candidates grow wary of the high cost of living in the Bay Area. With increasing variety in educational backgrounds, technical screens and testing are swiftly becoming must-haves in the hiring toolkit. Most quantitative professionals are still coming from master's or PhD programs. However, many have also supplemented their skill set with online courses or coding boot camps in order to stay up to date. Many hiring managers are relying on testing to measure technique and tool fluency and better evaluate talent. Additionally, we continue to see case studies used to assess problem-solving capabilities and business acumen. With all of these methods, it's important to remember to keep the hiring process moving and keep time commitments reasonable. Companies are looking to drill down on specific use cases, are focusing more on data scientists that specialize in particular areas, such as NLP, or natural language processing, computer vision, image processing, or even specific domain experience, like ad tech or IoT. However, as demand becomes more specialized, this narrows the potential talent pool. The market used to be more focused on do-it-all unicorns, but now that analytics at many firms is maturing, organizations are pivoting to seek out more specific skill sets that can elevate their capabilities to the next level. As so many organizations recognize the value add of data-driven decision making, there is a strong need for leaders who not only have compelling leadership skills and a strong understanding of analytics, but who are also well-versed in new or emerging techniques and who can explore new opportunities for the business. You can find even more data in the full report, where we break down salaries by quartiles, look at salary means as well as median, examine salaries by demographic factors like industry, gender, region, and much more. Download it for free at birchworks.com study. If you're looking to add to your data science or predictive analytics staff, we offer contingency and retain services from entry-level analysts all the way up to chief analytics officer or chief data scientist searches. Email info at birchworks.com for more information. And of course, if you're looking to browse opportunities, you can visit our job board, which is visited by thousands of quantitative professionals every month. For more hiring market insights, check out birchworks.com slash blog, where you can find our new flash survey on SAS versus R versus Python preferences, as well as advice on resumes, interviews, evaluating job offers, and much more. Stay up to date on our latest research. You can find us on LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook. And on our YouTube channel, found at youtube.com slash birchworks, you can find recordings of our other presentations, including SAS versus R versus Python data analysis, 2019 predictions, and our immensely popular career planning webinar with tons of job search tips. 
Visit birchworks.com slash study to download our full report now. And if you want to connect further with us, reach out to info at birchworks.com. We would love to hear from you. Thank you so much for joining us, and have a great day.